Hello, I'm Kenny Keller, the creator of Helicopter Line Ground School, and I want to give you my top 10 best auto rotation practice tips. Number one, you need to have a nice entry. If you enter it nice, it's going to be nice. If you enter it sloppy, it's going to be sloppy. So in this case, we'll use the R44 example. These tips are pretty common no matter what aircraft I fly in. It doesn't really matter. R44, Enstrom, Jet Ranger, it doesn't matter. The elements of a good auto, the majority of them are the same. In this example, we use 70 for our airspeed, 500 AGL when we enter and I want to be at zero rate ascent when I enter. So we want to give ourselves enough time that when we get to our entry point, we can have a nice entry. Again, zero vertical speed, the airspeed entry that we need, the altitude we want, and the trim that we want. I've heard my examiner say many times during the check ride, private, commercial, CFI, if it takes you 10 minutes to get set up for the straight in auto, take 10 minutes to get set up for the straight in auto. You want to have everything ready to go. You want to feel good about it so you have a nice entry. If you enter it nice, it'll be nice. You enter it sloppy, it's going to be sloppy. Number two, you need a small aft cyclic pulled entry. So we talked about every, having everything set up. I like to use 70 for the glide in the R44, 60 in the Enstrom, doesn't matter, whatever aircraft you're flying, you're gonna have your, your glide speed. I enter about 75 in the R44 so that when I enter and I give that small aft cyclic pull, the nose does not dive. So you're setting your speed when you enter the auto rotation with a small aft cyclic pull. And if you do that and you set your speed correctly at the beginning, chances are you'll have a nice glide going down. If you screw up the speed at the beginning, then you'll start going forward, backward, airspeed up and down, RPM, trim, everything kind of goes wacky. So getting that, R or getting that speed set at the beginning is very, very important. Number three, you need three things simultaneously at that entry. We just, men just mentioned the aft cyclic, so you need a little bit of aft cyclic, a little bit of right pedal, whatever it takes to put yourself in trim, and also lower the collective. All three of these things should be done together. If you do one, then the other, then the other, then you're kind of just monkeying the thing around and it's not gonna be that nice. You need to do all three of these entry points, aft cyclic, right pedal, down collective, all simultaneously. Number four, roll off on a throttle to split your needles. No throttle chops. Back in the old days, they taught chop that throttle all the way off. Well, when you do a throttle chop, you have a chance of the engine actually stopping, and then you're going for a real engine failure when you're trying to do a practice engine failure. So you want to roll off enough throttle to split the needles, do it smoothly, gently, and split the needles to the point that's appropriate for the aircraft that you're flying. Number five, control your airspeed during the glide. So in this example, we're using 70. If you set it right and you get a 70 and you don't start moving that cyclic around, keep that airspeed nice, then it makes everything nice. Again, you start messing with airspeed, then things change with RPM, so on and so forth. So really work on focusing inside, outside. You have a cross check. Inside your airspeed, outside your spot. Inside at RPM, outside, look at your spot. Inside trim, outside to your spot. You want to really focus on keeping that airspeed steady. Number six, raise enough collective smoothly to control RPM. On most aircraft, depending on the day, after you enter, the RPM is going to start to rise and you're probably going to have to pull up collective a little bit. Now this could be different on varying aircraft. I'm not saying in every single instance, but most generally, after you enter it, the RPM is going to start to rise. So be prepared and know that it's going to rise on you and just start raising a little bit of collective ahead of time to keep it from getting too high. If you catch it early, it just makes the auto nice. If you wait till RPM is too high, then you're making more of an abrupt up movement with the collective and it just things make, makes things messy. So not only you're focusing on your airspeed, your trim, you're really focusing on keeping that RPM under control. Number seven, maintain trim during the glide. I can tell you it's amazing. If you get that trim in there and you have the aircraft trimmed into the wind, it actually seems like it comes down a little bit slower. It's more controlled and a lot of people will enter it. They'll put in the pedal but not enough or too much and they come down out of trim. If you fly the thing in trim, no matter what your aircraft it is, it will come down what seems like slower by being in trim. Number eight, set RPM close to range where the needles will join when the throttle is added. 
So again, this could vary a little bit depending on the aircraft or maybe an instructor, the way a, a certain instructor wants you to do it. But in general, about halfway through the green range is pretty usually close to the actual operating range for the engine. So that could vary on instructor and technique. I'm just saying in general, you know, high isn't necessarily the best and low isn't necessarily the best, usually about halfway through the green range. And again, depending on the aircraft and depending on circumstances. If you're trying to stretch a glide, you might go to the lower side of the RPM. So there are other factors to take into consideration. This is just kind of an in general, rather than versus being too high or too low. I like to be about the center of the green RPM range for the rotor system. Number nine, start with a gentle flare at approximately treetop level. Now again, depending on what aircraft you're flying, it may say start your flare at 40 feet. It may say 50 feet. It may say 100 feet. So again, it depends on the manufacturer's recommendation on what point to start your flare. Personally, I use treetop level. It's hard for me to distinguish between 40 feet, 50 feet. I use the term treetop level. So as I'm coming down, I'm actually watching the tree line and kind of as I pass the top of the tree line, it's when I start a gentle flare. During the flare, I start a small aft pull just below treetop level and as I get closer to the ground, I make it bigger and I make it bigger and I make it bigger and then I level and raise the collective. And what I'm doing is, I'm doing that gradually so that d depending on the wind for the day, I can decide as I start with a gentle flare, do I need to be aggressive because it's not windy or can I have more of a shallow flare because it is windy. So depending on the day, as you pull it, you can decide I need to get more aggressive with it or I can leave it a little more, sh little more less aggressive because I have a lot of wind and then level out. Again, it's technique. Some people teach they get down closer and get more aggressive near the ground and then level it. I struck a tail rotor once during a practice auto rotation. So because of that reason, I'm a little more conservative and I was also taught this early on by an instructor who I thought very, high, very highly of and he taught me a lot of really good stuff and that's where he taught me start it with gentle and as you get closer make it bigger, make it bigger, make it bigger, deciding how much you need to flare and then level the helicopter. Number 10, when the speed is almost gone, level the aircraft, raise collective, roll on throttle. Now this can vary a little bit too on technique, but if you remember in order what's going to happen, it's speed is almost gone, level, raise collective, roll on throttle. Now depending on the technique, some people pull a little collective before they level. That's okay depending on the aircraft and the inertia in your rotor system. I personally don't really start pulling collective until I have it leveled out and then I raise collective and roll in the throttle. For me, that works really well. So I understand that that's tough for people, cleaning it, cleaning it all up at the end, but you'll get better with practice. And as long as you have the, the technique in mind of what it is you're gonna do, that will help you cleaning up that auto rotation at the end. So that was basically for one of our members that emailed me this morning and he said, Kenny, I'm really struggling with the autos. And he gave me a long list of the different problems he was having. And I just thought, you know, over the years of the teaching and all the different aircraft that I've flown and got the chance to instruct in, the basics of the maneuver, the 10 tips I just gave you, are pretty much what I think are the general elements of good auto. And I just sat down and, and did the first 10 that come to mind. We could probably do another 30 of those on tips, but those are the top 10 that just came to mind, the things that I see that people struggle with, whether it's messing up the airspeed or messing up the trim or whatever the case is, those are the most common problems that I see. So let us know what you think down in the comment section below. If you're interested in learning more about Helicopter Online Ground School, go to the link in the description box below. Click that link. Any questions, you can email me at Kenny at HelicopterGround.com. So give us a like, share, some feedback, and we'll see you in the next video.